We'd like to start the regular press conference by Minister Hayashi. Minister, the floor is yours. Thank you. I would like to explain one matter. As of March 27th, will begin services whereby online applications for passports and visa and various certificates could be conducted. We're also going to start in advance partially services whereby these fees could be paid online through a credit card. Up until now, there was a need for applicants to come to the office during daytime on weekdays to make applications. But going forward, depending on the substance of the application, they'll be able to make application through online, regardless of whether or not it is nighttime or on, not on weekdays. So therefore, this will significantly improve the convenience. Going forward, for further digitalization of the consular procedure, we would like to expand the scene for usage. Also, as the hub for digitalization efforts, we are planning to set up on April 1st an office for promotion of consular digitalization. As for details, please ask the staff. Thank you very much. That is all for my side. If you have a question, please raise your hand. Once you're designated, please state your name and affiliation and ask your question. Tanaka-san from GG Press. Tanaka from GG Press. The other day, Prime Minister Kishida and his meeting with President Zelensky. That's my question. Prime Minister Kishida, at the time of the meeting, he gave a gift to President Zelensky, which was a victory rice spatula. This is usually used in sports events or something to wish for victory or success in tests. But to make this a gift to Ukraine, who is in a war, this may be considered as inappropriate. Can you talk about the reason why this was presented to Zelensky, President Zelensky? Yes. In visiting Ukraine, Prime Minister Zelensky gave a gift to President Zelensky. And it was a victory rice spatula from Hiroshima and also a lamp with a paper crane motif made of Miyajima Osuna Yaki pottery. The reason for selection of these gifts is to encourage President Zelensky, who is confronting the aggression from Russia, and to pray for peace. That was the purpose of these gifts, so I don't think it was inappropriate. Takeout Sam from Mani Shimbun, please. Thank you, Takeuchi from Mani Shimbun. Yes, so let's ask a question about Prime Minister Kishida's visit to Kyiv. He visited Kyiv and met with Mr. Zelensky. But at the same time, she, Mr. Xi Jinping of China was visiting Moscow at the same time. Now, European and the US media had actually compared this situation, and, there were, and I believe the views toward the Ukraine aggression by Russia between Japan and China has become very clear. What are your thoughts? And also, what are the impact of the diplomacy between Japan and China going forward? Thank you. With regard to the visit by Prime Minister Kishida to the Ukraine, I think we're able to communicate to the world that this Russia's aggression to Ukraine is an outrage that shakes the very foundation of the international order. And any attempts to change the status quo through force in Ukraine, in any part of the world, cannot be allowed. We, on the other hand, the visit by Mr. Xi Jinping to Russia, I believe that at the time of the joint press announcement by the two leaders, there was no mention of immediate withdrawal of Ukraine, of Russia correction from the Ukraine, Ukrainian territories. That is what we understand. Now, Russia is continuing it with its attack on Ukraine, even as we speak now. And also, President Putin has made comments that the part of the Ukraine which was annexed is no longer sub is not a subject for any, any negotiation. So we see no signs of any attempts on the part of Mr. Putin to make a concession toward peace. It is Russia that is actually conducting aggression, which is in violation of the international law. And so therefore, any resolution for this problem must be based on this assumption and premise. As far as Japan is concerned, inclusive of the situation pertaining to the Ukraine, we are closely monitoring the trends and the activities of Russia and China. At the same time, 
we would like to ask China to take responsible actions, availing ourselves of various opportunities. And also, with regard to my visit to China, with regard to Japan-China relations, we believe that the bilateral relations hold various potential, but also we are faced with various challenges and potentials. At the same time, Japan and China hold significant responsibility for peace and prosperity of the region and the world in the face of the changing international situation. Also, in terms of uh, our relationship with China, we, were, we want to maintain the very positive momentum which we were able to gain at the leaders' meeting that took place in no November last year. And we will continue to aim to build a constructive and stable relationship with China through efforts by Japan and China by firmly maintaining and asserting a position and strongly requesting China's responsible actions, while at the same time cooperating in matters of common interest by having robust dialogue between the leaders, including discussion on various issues. With regard to my visit to China, Mr. Xin Gang and Mr. Wang Yi reiterated their invitation to myself, and we will coordinate the concrete timetable and schedule, bearing in mind various circumstances as we go forward. Thank you. Wei from Kyodo News. Wei from Kyodo News. About Japan ROK relations. Yesterday, you met with Minister Kwong Yong Se, Unification Minister of ROK. And then in the cap meeting with the Chief Cabinet Secretary, Mr. Matsuno, it was reported that a proposal was made to establish an office, a window for consultation on abduction issue. Yes, yesterday I myself met with him, and I understand that there was a meeting with Chief Cabinet Minister Matsuno. And from the Chief Cabinet Minister, between Japan and the ROK, there is, uh, Minister Kwon expressed the intent to have consultation between Japan and South Korea on the North Korean issues. In any case, for immediate resolution of the abduction issue, Japan wishes to have close communication with relevant countries, including South Korea. You have some from NHK, please. You have some from NHK. If I could return to the question with regard to visit by Prime Minister to EQ. Now, the spokesman for the Russian Foreign Ministry has stated that his visit was to deflect attention away from the leaders' meeting between Russia and China. So therefore, what is your view with regard to the comment made by the Russians? Yes, with regard to Prime Minister Kishida's visit to the Ukraine, I think we're able to confirm that Russian aggression into Ukraine is a outrageous act that shakes the very foundation of the international order. And also, I believe we were able to communicate to the world that we cannot allow unilateral change, attempts to unilateral change the status quo through force in any parts of the world, including the Ukraine. Now, on the other hand, with regard to the visit by Mr. Xi Jinping to Russia, there was a joint press announcement, but the two, but the leaders of Russia and China, I understand, has made no mention of immediate withdrawal of troops, Russian troops from the Ukrainian territory. As far as Japan is concerned, we will continue to co closely monitor the situation pertaining to Russia and China, inclusive of the situation related to the Ukraine. At the same time, with regard to China, we all, through various opportunities, we want to ask them to continue to take responsible actions. Thank you. Takashi-san from Asahi Shimbun. Takashi from Asahi Shimbun. Earlier? Related to the question from Mainichi newspaper, Japan and Ukraine summit meeting on the same day, uh, China-Russia summit meeting was held. So contrast was very clear. Now, including your visit to China, Japan-China relations, is there going to be some stagnation in the improvement of Japan-China relations? Can you talk about your prospects? As I said earlier, about Japan-China relations, both countries do have a lot of potential, but at the same time, we are faced with many challenges and concerns. And at the same time, as the international situation changes, Japan and China both have huge responsibility for the peace and prosperity of the region and the world. So as I said, constructive and stable relationship is something that we both have to build through 
our respective efforts, it's important to build such a relationship between the two countries. So like I said before, that remains unchanged. Tanaka-san from Sankei Shimbu newspaper, please. Thank you. Tanaka from Sankei Shimbu newspaper. I'd like to ask about Taiwan, if I may. Now, Honduras, uh, who had diplomatic ties with China, with Taiwan, rather, is now, move, is now moving toward establishing diplomatic ties with China. So what is the position of the, of the Japanese government? And also, Taiwan is, uh, is exposed to virtual pressure from China, and their fear of diplomatic activities are being are being small. Are there any thoughts on the part of the Japanese government to help Taiwan? And also, what are some of the measures that you're considering? Yes, with regard to the situation in Honduras, as far as Japan is concerned. We are watching with great interest the situation of the, of the, of the strait relations from the standpoint of uh, regional peace and stability. Taiwan is a very important partner, a very important friend with whom we share basic values and also with whom we have very close economic and, and personal ties. So that being the case, on a day-to-day -day basis, based on the position of the Japanese government, we have had various exchange of views with various relevant countries. And also with regard to the Honduras government, and on various occasions, at various levels, we have been communicating our thoughts as the Japanese government. Now, with regard to the backdrop of the current situation, we would like to refrain from any comment as to the Japanese government. And indeed, as far as the Japanese government is concerned, based on this position, based on the position, we want to communicate our thoughts at the government through various levels to various relevant countries. For example, we have consistently supported the participation of Taiwan as the observer to the WHO General Assembly. And also, with regard to participation of Taiwan to various multilateral institutions, we want to make comprehensive response. We want to make a comprehensive response in the light of the significance of Taiwan taking part in those multilateral organizations. Thank you. So the press conference is now coming to a close. Thank you very much for your attendance.